You ain't bout it, you ain't bout it, you ain't kick on the mic. You ain't bout it, you ain't bout it, you ain't kick on the mic. You can go and subscribe, cause I be on it right. You ain't bout it, you ain't bout it, you ain't kick on the mic. Ryan Poles and the Chicago Bears have done so much to the roster over the last couple of years, and there's still three moves that the Chicago Bears can make to really take this team to the next level. Hey, what's going on, Bears fans? Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Keek on the Mic, the podcast all about the Chicago Bears. As always, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification to catch all Bears content right here on the podcast. Bears fans, make sure you also do me a huge favor by also hitting the like button on today's episode of Keek on the Mic. Bears fans, as you guys can see, I have a very special guest. He also does Chicago Bears content as well, and that is Chicago Sports Talk. Michael, how you doing, Michael? Also, Angel Reese content as well. Angel mm -hmm. Reese content as well. Yes, you are You are not only Chicago Bears content. You do mostly all, all Chicago content besides, I guess, the Chicago Bulls at this point. But uh, all in all, it's really good to have you on once again to talk a little bit about the Chicago Bears. Michael, as we all know, Ryan Poles and the Chicago Bears, um, they, they've been busy um, over the last couple of years during this rebu rebuild. Uh, Ryan Poles has done so much to this Chicago Bears roster, and it seems that the rebuild is finally over. Uh, but there are a couple of moves I feel like the Chicago Bears um, can make to really take this team to the next level. So I wanted to bring you on today um, to talk about those moves that the Chicago Bears could possibly make to really put this team in a, in a conversation where like, okay, we could possibly be a guaranteed playoff team or maybe even better Super Bowl contenders. I know that may be overdramatic uh, to say those type of things, but the first move I feel like the Chicago Bears can make, Michael, is signing Connor Williams. We I know Bears fans have been kind of saying, hey, we're still uncomfortable with the center position with Coleman Shelton and uh, Ryan Bates. So a lot of people are thinking, even though, even though Connor Williams is coming off an ACL injury, um, they feel like he would be the perfect option um, to really complete this Bears offensive line. How do you feel about Connor Williams, Michael? I spoke with you about this. I remember draft night and I'm like, Keek, where there is no, we have to be skeptical about the center. And you try, like I said, you are an optimistic Bears fan. You try to see the best. Like if any of y'all don't know Keek, he tried to hype up uh, signing Mike Glennon. So, um, Seeing the situation through, um, signing Connor Williams, I do believe that he would be a massive upgrade, obviously over Col Coleman Shel Shelton and also uh, Ryan Bates. But I do want to remind Keek, and I have told this to Keek, my entire concern is how the Bears, the entire Bears offensive line, that's the center, that's the left guard, that's the, the that's the Nate Davis and uh, Tim and Jenkins. The only thing that I'm comfortable with is Darnell Wright. Other than that, I have a lot of question marks on every single position on that offensive line. But getting Connor Williams, it would be a massive upgrade. Like, I believe uh, Swifty uh, did a uh, chart. I'm not sure if you saw it, but the Dolphins were pretty top tier with him starting and look at the Dolphins without him. So. Yeah. Getting a guy like Connor Williams will be like a massive upgrade to the center. And the Bears have not had a good center ever since 2018 with Cody Whitehair. Ever since then, you had Sam Mustafer. <laughs> I go yeah. deeper than that, though, Michael Olin Krutz. <laughs> you, you know, even, even with uh, Cody Whitehair, he had a couple of good seasons. I'm talking to we, – we need a long-term center, you know, on this offensive line. I feel like with Connor Williams' age being only 27 years old, yes, he is coming off a major injury, but he also had the same injury um, a couple of years ago, and he came back and um, showed that he's able to deal with that adversity, right? And he's, he fits perfectly on what Ryan Poles is looking for within this offensive line. And, and personally, I actually like what Braxton Jones brings to the offensive line. I think considering the source that he was what a fifth round pick a couple of years ago. Um, he's a solid starter besides, you know, maybe him trying to deal more with the bull rush, right? That's really the only bad thing you say about Braxton Jones, but if you're able to get Connor Williams. You have Braxton Jones and everyone knows that Tevin Jenkins is a baller. If he can stay healthy, you get Connor Williams at the center. Then forget Nate Davis, put Ryan Bates at right guard. And you have darn all right. I think that's going to be one of the best offensive lines um, that we have seen in a very long time. 
Yeah, the Bears have not had a good offensive line at all. From what I, yeah. I mean, I don't I don't remember the last time the Bears had a solid. I mean, 2018 was the only year I could think of where everything was like perfect besides Cody Parkey. Yeah, right. So it's like one of those things that there's there, there's a lot of analysts out there thinking that if the Bears can get the offensive line figured out, that this team can be special. Of course, you you know have a lot of hype around Caleb Williams. You have you know the three headed monster at wide receiver. I mean, Rome, uh, Keenan, and DJ Moore. You have DeAndre Swift and Roshan Johnson and Khalil Herbert in the backfield. Cole Komet, Gerald Everett. It's really just the offensive line that there's still question marks. There's a lot of people thinking that this is a ascending offensive line, of course. Um, but even with Coleman Shelton and Ryan Bates, there's still questions at that center position. I feel like Connor Williams would be the perfect signing, the cherry on top for Ryan Poles uh, offseason for the Chicago Bears this year. I mean, there's. I mean, the only the only position that I'm comfortable with on that offensive line is is Darnell Wright. Everyone else is a question. Yeah, and, that, and that's accurate. You know, it it is accurate. You know, Darnell Wright has a lot of expectations going into year two. Um, I think with Tevin Jenkins and Nate Davis, it, you're basically speaking on. I guess I wouldn't even say potential, but the fact that can they actually stay healthy? Um, and even when Tevin Jenkins is healthy, he needs to prove that he can pass block as good as he can run block. He's a monster in the run game. Um, but in terms of pass blocking, he does have his struggles compared to some of maybe the top tier guards in the national football league as well. So to me, I think Connor Williams would be a, a, a good start, a good addition to this offensive line. I think this would definitely be a move, um, that can hopefully put not only this offensive line over the top, but the Chicago Bears offense over the top as well. But Michael, I do want to move on to the second move that I feel like the Bears could possibly make to really take this football team over the top. So we're going to go ahead and go to the defensive side of the football now for the Chicago Bears. I believe that the Chicago Bears should call the Cincinnati Bengals and say, hey, what do you want for edge rusher Trey Hendrickson? I know there was some drama earlier in the offseason saying that he wanted a trade. He has now, you know, hashed everything out, and now he's back with the Cincinnati Bengals. But that does not mean that he is not available via trade. He's still only 29 years old. Um, he is coming off a 17-and-a-half sack year, which is absolutely massive. Uh, he's still only 29 years old, so it's right in his prime. Um, he is due, well, what, I think $15 million this year, so definitely I think the Bears could possibly maybe afford a guy like that. And could you imagine a guy like Trey Hendrickson next to Montez Sweat? I know there's a lot of people out there saying they want to just go get Unique Nagagwe back, but to me, if you're able to land a guy like Trey Hendrickson and pair him with Montez Sweat, I think that's exactly what this Bears defense needs. We talk about the, the haul that we got from Carolina, especially that second round. That's guaranteed going to be a high pick because the Panthers are going to be horrible this year. So Bengals... Just take just take that second round. You know, you get you get a high second round. We get a high edge rusher. It's it's a win win for both teams. So let's just let's just keep it a buck. And plus, building and we all know we all know the the Khalil Mack trade surprised a lot of us. So we have to. Well, yeah, it did cost a first round pick, but Trey H Henderson, I do feel like maybe. We, we, at, at a price of a first round pick, probably. I know that's probably outrageous, but I feel like coming off of a 17 sack season, I feel like they're they're gonna view him more as trading a first round pick to get him, or or we could probably have that second round. But I don't think the Bengals are going to uh, accept that offer because they I think that they view that Trey uh, Hezerson is more value than just only a second round pick that's guaranteed by Carolina. Right. You know, and when I, when I really look at it, I do understand the value there. He's still 29 years old. He has, I think still two years left on his current deal. Um, but when you look at the Chicago Bears situation now, right, you have a team that feels like they can possibly win as soon as this year and hopefully make a playoff push as soon as this year with Caleb Williams in his first year in Chicago. You, lo you look at the current state of the Chicago Bears edge rushers. You have Montez Sweat, Demarcus Walker, and then um, Austin Booker, the fifth round pick um, in the 2024 NFL draft. To me, that is not enough. Everyone knows that what gets this Matt Eberflus ran defense uh, running is the pass rush. We already know that we have a hell of a secondary led by Jalen Johnson. But what can take 
that secondary to the next level is a good pass rush. You already have Montez Sweat. If you're able to get a guy like Trey Hendrickson, um, that would really take you to the next level. A deal that I think makes sense for both teams, because we have to remember, Michael, is that the Chicago Bears actually have three second-round picks in next year's NFL draft. I believe two or three, something like that. Don't don't uh, quote me on this, but we can give up a 2025 second round pick. Actually, we have it too. My bad. We have two second round picks next year, but we can give up our own second round pick and then a 2026 second round pick and try our best to keep Carolina second round pick. We know that pick's probably going to be pretty high, even though the Bengals probably will want that pick. But I'm thinking a 2025 and a 2026 second round pick. So two seconds in order to get Trey Henderson over here to Chicago, I think will be a massive win, um, not only for the Bengals to recoup some hopefully good second-round picks in future NFL drafts, but also for the Bears um, to really complete their defensive line here in Chicago. Yeah, so going 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 by that point, um, yeah, we do have two second-round picks, but whatever um, the Bengals want, I would say go get it, but if it's a first-round um if it's like a first round pick, I would probably say no. Just get Unique and Gakwe and call it a day. Yeah, and the Gakwe has experience, right? He knows what we need from him from this defense. He, you know, obviously an unfortunate injury at the end of the year. Even though his stats didn't show it, um, he was really heating up at the end of last season prior to um, his season ending injury. Um, I would really love to see what him and Montez Sweat would be able to do. Um, but if you swing and miss on Trey Henderson, I would definitely be okay with a guy like Unique Nagagwe. So, Michael, moving on to the final player that I feel like the Bears should maybe go out and get to really put this team over the top. And this may come to some of a surprise to most Bears fans on today's episode of Kick on the Mic. But I feel like the Chicago Bears should go out and get an old friend in Khalil Mack. And I know people like, Keek, what the hell are you talking about? You know, Khalil Mack's older at this point. I know they did just restructure his contract um, in March where he'll now be making $25 million um, and he will be a free agent in 2025. So he only has one more year on his deal. So it would technically be like a one-year rental. But even at Khalil Mack's age, he would still be excellent. He would still be excellent alongside Montez Sweat. And think about it. When Khalil Mack was a part of the Chicago Bears, besides the in 2018, this team wasn't very good. That's one of the reasons why Ryan Poles traded Khalil Mack because we were starting the rebuild. Now the rebuild is basically complete. This defensive line and defense in general is almost complete. And I still think Khalil Mack, with the production that he especially showed last year, will put this defensive line over the top. And I personally think it would only take a 2025 third round pick to the Los Angeles Chargers to bring Khalil Mack back to Chicago. To me, I think that would make Bears fans really happy to see Mack attack back in Chicago. That's going to be very difficult, in my opinion, because I don't remember the last time. Well, if you can remind me of some player that got traded and then will wind up getting traded from that team to the same team that traded him, I don't remember any player that has done that recently, but... I think um, I would love the ide- ideal um, uh, ideal idea to trade for Khalil Mack. However, it comes at a very good price. So we would have to not only give up that pick, we have to trade a player. And yes, I believe that th- this player and I l- and I like this player. Because, you know, I feel like he's a good addition to what the Chargers are going to be doing. And that is running back Khalil Herbert. I do I do feel like we're probably going to have to probably add him to that trade package for Khalil Mack. And think about it. What They have a Greg Roman offense. And if anybody knows who Greg Roman is, it does he mostly runs the football and they don't really have that much running backs and adding a guy like Khalil Herbert that has a lot of potential will will help their run game out a lot and the only thing that we ask for in return is Khalil Mack and and do I think it's gonna happen no I feel like the ship has already sailed with with uh 
Khalil Mack. I I won't. I hope he does. Like I said, I do feel like he's uh, wasting his career there because I when we traded him, I thought the Chargers would be a Super Bowl contender, right? With 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 with, with Khalil Mack, but um, with with that situation with uh, you know the Brand Stanley uh, head coaching position, right. and they got Jim Harbaugh and. He, Jim Harbaugh is not – well, like I said, with these pit, uh, players on the Chargers team, remember, Jim Harbaugh never invested into any of these players. That's why they traded Keenan Allen to us. Well, that's the big thing, Michael, is that when you look at the Chargers' current situation, they're already paying Joey Bosa uh, massive, massive money, right? And, and I don't, not, I'm not sure if they're going to be able to afford both Bosa and – and Mac, and then when you really look at the Bears' point of view, things they already have a top five defense, especially when you look at the final 10 weeks of last season. The Bears' defense was top five, and Khalil Mack just basically puts this defensive line or this overall defense that we have in Chicago over the top. I do agree that maybe sending them Khalil Herbert and a third round pick just to sweeten the deal would get the deal done. I think the fact of the matter is, is probably the money aspect. You have to remember, we still haven't paid Caleb or Roma Dunze to their rookie contracts. So I'm not sure if 25 million would be too expensive for Ryan Poles and the Chicago Bears to handle. And I want to make sure everyone knows that this is all hypothetical. Michael and I are not sitting here saying that it's going to happen. I think if we look at all three of the moves that we listed on today's episode of the Kick on the Mic, I think Connor Williams is probably the most realistic because you just have to go out and sign him, right? You're not giving up any draft capital. So that one is the most realistic. When you look at Trey Hendrickson or Khalil Mack, at that point, that is just a luxury. Those are guys that you want and you would love to have them on your defense, but will it actually happen? No, because there's a lot of moving parts. You have to give up draft capital. You have to think about the money, right, with Trey Hendrickson. I think he's making $15 million next year with Khalil Mack. He's making a little over $25 million. Um, So there's a lot of moving parts. But to me, out of all three of those moves, I think Connor Williams makes the most sense. But, hey, I would love to have Khalil Mack back in Chicago. I'll get my jersey out in a heartbeat. Yeah, and guess and guess what? We better we better do a, a show on, like, separate channels. Like, I'll, I come on, you're, you're showing on when that happens, and I'm like, oh, my God, tell me we did not just do that. Like I, I like I'm I'm gonna have to tell you Keek to like pinch me to see if I'm dreaming. No diddy. You know, Bears fans, uh, before we let you guys go, what what is the dream move for you guys as Bears fans that would you know put this offseason over the top? We all know that Ryan Poles has put in work as Chicago Bears GM. Um, do you think it would be Connor Williams? Would it be Trey Henderson? Would it be Khalil Mack or, or a different player out there that you would love to see the Chicago Bears maybe bring via trade or maybe sign via free agency? I'm um, not would really put this Bears roster over the top going into training camp and would kind of label this team into serious playoff contenders. Let us know down below in the comment section. But Michael, thank you so much for joining me on today's episode of Keek on the Mic. Appreciate it. Yeah, but as always, Bears fans, make sure you continue to hit that subscribe button and the notification to catch all Bears content right here on the podcast. Make sure you follow me on all my social media platforms, and make sure you share this episode of Keek on the Mic with every single Bears fan that you know. Better than that, be back for an all-new Bears podcast right here on Keek on the Mic. Thanks, guys, and as always, bear down. You've been listening to Keek on the Mic, a podcast all about the Chicago Bears. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And hit the bell notification to catch all Bears content right here on the podcast. Thanks, guys, and Bear Down.